This is the second video on the Parabola Master Bath Project. We're going to be exploring our bathroom vanity cabinet design. You can see that the cabinet actually has three face items, an integrated countertop with the style of sink shape, which will be the third segment. The client had brought in a photograph of the style of cabinet that they were interested in with three face items and then the integrated parabola style sink. We've rendered that already out and so we're going to begin the steps of creating the cabinet, the custom shelf, and then the countertop. Let's go ahead and begin with the cabinet vanity creation. Notice my work environment as we get started. On the right hand side of the screen I have my floor plan and then I have also a wall elevation camera that I can either double click on or just highlight that tab. I can design in any one of these views whichever is convenient for me. On the left hand side of the screen I have my 3D view and I can start there by placing my cabinet. Now when I place that cabinet it's picking up the defaults for this plan so the wood species and the countertop color are based on those settings that I have defined in that template or profile plan. And I'm going to go ahead and begin the modification of this cabinet. And I want to make the changes so that it looks like the cabinet you see in the rendering. If I double click on the cabinet and open up the dialog panel, we're going to begin with the sizing of the cabinet. Currently the height is set at 31 inches. That's good and I'm going to change the width to be 60 inches. That height of 31 inches includes the countertop. In the next video segment we're going to end up removing that and coming back to that. So I'm going to leave the countertop at one and a half inches. And on the toe kick let's set that to be zero. Now each time I make a change notice that over here in the preview panel it will update. Those changes won't take effect in the wall elevation view until we say OK. So at the toe kick at zero, we'll make that change. On the front of the cabinet, the box construction is framed versus frameless. I'm going to change the left style to zero and the same for the right style. With the accessories, I'm going to use a front pilaster and I'm going to choose one from the library. And I've actually already saved one into my user catalog. Let's go ahead and open that up and select that pilaster. It's just simply a flat profile and the width at one and a half inches. On the door and drawer panel, I want to change the hardware style. Let's browse into the library and let's come down into our poles section. And really what I want doesn't appear to be in this core catalog. Let's minimize that and go to the bonus catalog. There's additional components from the Chief Architect 3D library that you can find. I'm looking for an oversized pole and to begin with let's choose the long vertical pole short. select that and then the down from top distance I'm going to change that to two inches. Again it's difficult to see but you'll get a preview of the changes you're making. On the drawer style let's do the same change here. So we'll go into the bonus catalogs, find our cabinet hardware, oversized poles and we're looking for the complementary vertical pull horizontal short, select OK, and the distance from the top on that, I want to set that at three inches. So we've made the hardware changes. Now on the uh, front panel, let's actually just click on this, it will instantly take you to that area. Actually before I make any changes, let's go back to the general tab and let's remove that countertop. So as we make our relative changes, the item face items won't change. So back on the front tab, let's begin with our drawer area. First of all, I want to change that item height to 16 and let's make it three quarters. 
And so you'll notice again the change update. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a split vertical. And you'll see the change. And let's go ahead and try, try that again. And we'll take and uh, split vertical one more time. Now if I move up, so you'll see that I have three face items on this area. If I move up to the horizontal layout, let's go ahead and use this new button called Equalize. And then it's going to automatically spread out those, those face items. On this first element, let's set the width to be 16 inches. And let's use the split horizontal. So now I have two drawers in there. I'm going to repeat the exact same thing on the face item on the very end. So I'm going to highlight that, hit the split horizontal, change the item width to 16. And then on the center face item, let's change that from a drawer to a set of double doors. Select OK. On the bottom face item, highlight that. And I'm going to change that element to an opening. Let's go ahead and change that to an opening. And then on this bottom face item, I'm just going to remove that. Press the delete key and remove that off. So I've gone through and created the different components of the cabinet. And let's go ahead and select OK. And you'll be able to see that in the elevation view. Now the final thing that we can do is let's use our material painter. And let's change the color of the two side items. So you can see that change. Notice in my elevation view that I have a solid panel on the back. There's a few ways that I could really handle this. And the quickest way is just to select this cabinet and set a feature on the sides and back to on the back side to match the front. You'll see that it has opened that up and created that opening. Now there is probably a better way to do that but that's the quickest way because I'm not really after the accuracy in the cabinet schedule because in the cabinet schedule that would have face items on the back side. The other way to draw that would just be to have an elevated cabinet without the side pilasters and then place those separately as a maybe a partition on either side. Next in the vanity is to create a shelf down below here. And if I click on the front item for that opening, I can specify the shelves. And there's a manual option. So if I come in here and press 1, and then uh, from previous, you could center it. Um, you can set the dimension of it. If I select OK, that's going to give us a shelf. And let's reorient our 3D view so we can see this a little bit better. Ah, it's tough to get the right view. But you can see the, uh, the shelf in there. And really what I'm after, if I bring up our image here, I'm after a little bit more interesting shelf. What I want to do is I want to create a series of slats in the shelf. And I'm going to have to build that using a custom object since I don't have that option to create openings inside of the shelf itself. Let's go back into our plan view and use one of our custom tools to do that. And let me just hit undo and we'll remove that shelf off of the cabinet. Toggle back to our plan view and let's go ahead and maximize that view. Using one of our solid tools called the Polyline Solid, I'm going to come in here and draw out a solid at the same dimension as our cabinet. Let's just pull that out a little ways. Using my temporary dimensions, let's set that to be the same distance as the cabinet. And actually what I want to do on that dimension, the two front pilasters were an inch and a half on each side. So I'm going to set that to be 57 inches so it will fit inside of there. And let's just use our center tool and we'll center that back on the uh, cabinet. So I've created the basic shape of that and if I double click on the item, let's go ahead and bring this over. 
Let's set the elevation at the top at uh, maybe four and a half inches. And then the thickness, let's set that at three quarters to match our other separation. Select OK. And let's see if we can bring up uh, both views at the same time so you can see what we're doing here. So on the right hand side you can see the slab that we've created. Let's use our material eyedropper and just pick up the color off of that element. Now to create the opening in the slats it's actually pretty easy to do. Let me just create one more copy of this and I'm going to slide it over here. So I actually have two of those. So I can save that here a little bit. What I'm going to do with the first item is I'm going to use the copy in place. It's down here in the lower left hand section of your screen. And when I click this button you won't see anything because it's going to copy it in place right over the top of the other one. So I've clicked it and now I'm going to highlight the edge here and holding the C down on my keyboard which stands for concentric. I'm going to slide that in and see how that's sliding in. And if I press the tab key, pull this over here a little bit, I can actually enter in a dimension that we can be very specific to that. And let's go ahead and enter it in as two inches. So that's going to slide that in exactly two inches from the original. And if I now double click and open that object, there's an option to put a hole in it. Select OK and you can see that we've created that hole inside. Now with the extra slab that we've created, let's go ahead and highlight this. And what I want to do is I want to set this dimension to be two inches. So it's going to work as our shelf. And I'm just going to slide this into place and let's just zoom in so we can snap this into place. And I'm just going to slide it over a little bit and let's highlight that dimension. We'll set that at off two inches. Now all I need to do is do a multiple copy of that object and pull it all the way down. So in the lower section of your menu is a multiple copy tool. Let's double click on that and let's set that to be every four inches for that item. Let's zoom out here so we can see the whole element and then I'll just pull that across. You'll see that it's not quite right, so let's draw a marquee around all of the elements in here. Highlight them all, use the center tool, center it on there, and now I've got that spacing set exact for all of the slots. And now I'm just going to use the shift click and grab the outside item, use the block tool, make architectural block. Now it's one entire object. I can actually save that into my library and reuse it, unblock it, make any customizations that I need to it. So let's now slide this element into place. Actually, probably what I would do is put that on its own layer. So if I came in here, um, what I would do is probably I've created a CAD kitchen and bath for shelving. So I can turn that layer on and off in my plan view. Let me slide that into place, snap it up against the cabinet, and let's reorient our view so we can take a look at it. Where's my rotate command? And so now you can see that shelf. Let me, let me grab a different camera view here. Let's close that wall elevation so we can actually just use the camera tool. And we'll point and click in this direction. So now you can see our cabinet and all I need to do is really kind of create the different colors. So let's open up our library here. So I'm going to look inside my paints and the client was pretty specific about the color they wanted and I'm not sure what the paint code was because they didn't have it. And so they brought me a picture and what I want to do is I want to match the color off of this cabinet and apply it onto our cabinet in our design. And it would have been easy perhaps if it was a manufacturer catalog. We could go in and grab that paint or if they gave me a paint code. But it's completely a custom cabinet and I'm not sure what the color was. But I do have the photo. So what I'm going to do is let me shrink my design down here a little bit so we can get some screen real estate. 
and I'll show you how I'll do. So what I've done here is I've slid and slid the chief architect screen off to the side here. So I've got my uh, photograph off to the right. I actually have dual monitors, but that's handy, but you can't see it in the video. So using the rainbow tool, I'm going to highlight the wood grain here. And there is an option underneath the texture panel that says blend with texture. And so the alder wood that I'm going to use, I'm going to blend that color. And my basic color is a yellow color from the wood. Let's click on that. And there's an eyedropper right here. When I click on that eyedropper, I can drag that anywhere on any of my monitors, including the digital photo. So if I come over here and this photo is a little bit dark, let me just click on that. And I'm going to lighten it based on what I think the light would be adjusted for that in the color. Once I have that color dialed in pretty close, select OK. And now I can make that change. And here's something that I also like to do is this is the preview of what you can do. And you can change that to a sphere or a square and get an idea of what it's going to look like. There's also a rendering style called Ray Trace. So once we do our high-end rendering, it'll show you what it's going to look like in a Ray Traced view. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit further in the video, but it's a very handy tool to give you an idea of exactly the way this material is going to look. So I've blended the color with the photograph. We'll select OK make that change and there is the change to the cabinet. May not be quite the right color but that's pretty close and of course I can show the rendering to the client and make sure that they're comfortable with that. In the next video segment we're going to take a look at creating our custom countertop.